Hi there. Welcome to another episode of Antonella Goes Hunting. We live in the tropics and bananas are definitely in season. Ever had a banana become overripe? Well, what I do is I place it into the freezer and pull it out when I've got some time on my hands and I'll make an easy peasy banana loaf. So stick with me today so that when you've got some overripe bananas, you can do the same. The first thing that we're going to do today is grease and line our banana loaf tin. So with a little bit of butter on your hands, it becomes nice and soft. You want to run it on the inside of your tin so that you end up greasing it nicely. Make sure you get into all the crevices. And then next is to turn on the oven to 160 so that our banana cake doesn't go too dark. With some baking paper, check the size against your tin. This one should be fine to line it. We're going to do the base first. The base is done easily. This one here is a spring form version, so I can pop it out. If you don't have a spring form version, just use the actual base of your tin so that you can see the you need. And all I'm gonna do is just draw with a pencil on the inside so that I have the shape of my, on my baking paper. A pair of scissors. I want you to cut about a centimetre around the line that you've drawn. Now, all along that line, I'm actually going to cut little slits. Now we're going to line the sides of our tin. So what I want you to do is grab your baking paper and rub it around the sides to see how long a length you need. Around here, you could probably do it all in one go. I like to do this one in twos because otherwise I'm using too much on my baking paper. So that's half. I'll cut that there. Then we'll fold the paper into threes. Folding it into thirds like this means that I'm not wasting so much paper. And if I use a sharp knife, I can cut my paper nice and neatly. Place this one into my tin. It will nicely do half of the tin. Place the next one in from the end of the last one, all the way around. And then where it doubles up, just nip off that last little piece. So the tin is ready to go. Your oven is on at 170 and we can start with our batter. I have three extremely overripe bananas that I've had in my freezer. So you'll see here, they're quite black. So if I just pop them off, they'll be very easy for me to smoosh. I can literally just sit out into the bowl. So with a fork, I'm just gonna give it a quick swirl just to make sure that it's nicely smooshed. That's what you want with banana cake. I have 60 grams of melted butter, which I'm going to just put in here with my mashed bananas and give it a quick stir around so it's all mixed in together. Then one scoop of baking soda. and a dash of salt. Next we'll do two and a half cups of plain flour. Once the flour is stirred through, we're going to get one egg. It's been sitting here at room temperature. Crack it open, 
Give it a quick beating. Now I find bananas are quite sweet. Because of that, I only use half a cup of sugar with this as well. So we're gonna egg in there slowly and mix it through. So slowly put in your half cup of sugar. Keep stirring as you add. There we go, and you end up with a nice batter in the bottom of your bowl. At this point, squeeze in a touch of vanilla bean paste. And if you like walnuts, this is the point where you would add some. In this size mixture, I would recommend a small handful of walnuts and what we're going to do is we're just going to chop them up just roughly and they'll go really well in the cake. There we are and we're ready to go. Pour your mix into your loaf pan. Last of all, if you'd like to decorate your actual cake, go into the oven. You can grab a banana, chop it in half, and lay it on the top as a decoration piece. And I'm just gonna slice it in half. And I'm gonna lay it across the top. Inside that, I'm gonna place a couple of big pieces of walnuts. There you go, your banana loaf is ready to go into the oven in around 50 minutes. Your banana loaf is out. I've given it a few minutes and we're just going to pop it open. Take that off. And you can see here it's nice and firm to touch, nice and brown. I'm going to cut the end piece off so that you can see what it looks like inside. Look at that. Just divine. I'm gonna cut a slice here for myself. Now, of course, you could slice this up, wrap each individual slice up with a bit of cling wrap, and you'll be able to store it in your fridge or freezer for a later date. Yum oh. A little bit of butter on a knife and we'll spread that across. Oh gosh, so good. Now, are you two little tasters? Don't tell anyone. <laughs> please. Really good. I'll have this for afternoon tea today. And like I said, wrap up a couple of the slices and put it away into the fridge and I can have it for breakfast each morning with a little bit of butter on top. That's it from me today. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram and I will let you know when my next vlog and blog come out. The blog has the written recipe that has the video tag. Don't forget to follow and subscribe, please. See you next time. Happy hunting.